Hey guys, welcome back. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modern Bench. Just getting a bit late on. Uh, part three now of the build of this Airfix Hurricane Mark 1. It's a build for beginners, so um, hope you're enjoying it. So, as I told you at the beginning of this video, there will be no tutorials or any information at all about painting and stuff. I'm basically building this as a paint mule to try out the new outdoor paints. So, that's why I'm doing this. I'm building it as a proper build it's not like a starter set build it's a proper build we're using Tamiya extra thin we're using a few little tools and we're using super glue as a seam filler and we're going around filling seams sanding seams and we're going to end up with a really really pretty little hurricane at the end of it so as you can see here off where well, you've probably seen the video now as directed I've painted the lower section of the fuselage dark grey and the upper section is in the cockpit green um, and I've just it's a process called dry brushing. I'll cover it in another video. What I intend to do after this, I intend to do another build of a more complex kit. Probably again Airfix. Um, and then that one will be nothing to do with the build, but nothing about seam filling and stuff like that. It'll be all about the painting. So I think that's the easiest way to do it. Otherwise, these are videos turn into like mega long projects. So, um, so basically... We've got our green and our grey painted in there and we've got it all dry brushed and everything. You've got some detail on the side there. If you want to go around and pick it out, you can. There's no real point because when it's all closed up, you can hardly see any of it. So unless you want to do some practice, I probably wouldn't bother. It's very nice that it's in there. It's some very nice, sharp, crisp detail. So what we'll do now, we'll get these fuselage halves off of the sprue. Just like so. go round and cut the parts off. Now, as I said, we've already covered all the seam filling and sanding and everything on the wing. So I don't intend to go through all of that again at length. We'll do some sanding, but I'm not going to go through all the seam filling and everything at length like we did on the wing because it's just repeating the same old thing and you've already seen it. So I'm going to get my sanding stick. This is my Tesco nail file, I've got the smooth side here and I'm just going to sand this face to remove the paint. Okay, and that's also going to make sure, if you notice I've left that sprue nib on there, I can take a bit more off if I want to. But um, don't really worry too much about taking sprue nibs off where you've got two parts going together because you're going to be sanding that seam anyway. So there's no point. This one here, you need to be very careful to remove this and not make an undercut don't cut into the part that way because we've got a belly that's going to go on there, this part here. And if we, if we end up making a mark there, we're going to end up with a, a filler job. So hopefully it will fit together nicely. We can sand that away. Just remove that just like so. And there's the same back here. There's another one there, look. Make sure they're gone. Okay, so make sure they're nice and smooth and gone. Right. Um... And as I say, we're going to sand away here, we're going to sand away on here. Now where you've got this here, it's all level, you can just lay the sanding stick on there and sand both halves at the same time, both there and there. And it'll make sure it's all nice and square. Make sure there's no lumps on the sprue nib. Just checking to see what's going on here. Because this is a bit odd. Normally you would get half the fin on each one, but this one's got the whole fin on there. And you can see there's an undercut down there, so it's not like uh, most other kits. So we can sand away these sprue nibs here. We could use our pencil process if we want to. Just get rid of them. And then I'm going to remove some of that sprue nib there. Remove some of that sprue nib there. Now on here you see we've got all these pins so we can't just easily sand it. So what we're going to do is get one of our narrower pieces. Remember we cut this one up. So get one of our narrow pieces. That won't fit in between. That one will. So with that resting in between those two pins there, we can just sand away to our heart's content. There we go. That's going to make sure that's all nice and flat. And on the back here, we'll come back to the big one. So we'll make sure that sprue nib's gone and also we get rid of all the paint. You don't have to get rid of the paint, it just helps. We've got a step there, yeah we've got a step there because the tail on a hurricane is not in the centre, it's off to the port side. It's always worth remembering. So we're just going to do a dry fit, dry fit everything. 
we can see they fit together lovely we do have a bit of an issue back here there's something stopping this going together which I'm glad of in a way because it gives me a chance to show you how to find it so what we've got here we've got a gap you can see there's a gap there and I can't actually close it up so what we're going to see, do is look for what it could be so I'm looking on here and I can see I don't know if you can see that right by my what's what I've got on the fingernail there's a bit sticking out on there so I'm just going to quickly sand that away and if it's got it on this one it's probably got it on every one so have a look on your kit guys if you're building the same one and yeah it's going together nicer but that pin is too big so I'm going to remove that pin you're, oh my god you can't do that yes you can you can remove the pins sometimes you'll be building a kit particularly the older ones and these pins all these pins on here they go into these holes on here and sometimes they actually force the parts to be misaligned if that happens just cut them off okay you can see I've cut that pin off and now look how much better that rerun fits together so it means we don't have a location I can move the part about like this but it goes together so much nicer I could have drilled it out but just cut the pin off just get rid of it okay so we can see there that's all going together very nicely indeed so we got we're going to have no real seam work to do along there we're going to have no real seam work to do here we're going to have to do a little bit of scribe in here that's all going together fine so that's all good right so and the dog agrees with me outside as well now on here ignore this this is these are the steps for the entrance ladder for the sea king i'm building at the moment um here we've got a seat we've got our floor there now what i did do i, was, I, I said i wasn't going to do this off camera but i went on and assembled that because what i wanted to do was hold them to paint them. you can see i've got these little sticks for holding things for painting them these are available from premium hobbies they're made by a company called infini um, and what's nice about them they've got usually they have wooden shafts but these have metal shafts so when you want to clean the paint off and you just dip them in your thinners and not worry about the wood getting wet um, these parts here you can see you've got the control column the rudder pedal and the floor here I glued them together so that I could paint it all as one because holding all those individually and painting them was going to be a nightmare so I glued it together so I'm sorry I did that off camera but you can see how it goes there you can see how that goes and I've also gone in with a brush and painted the the um, top of the control column there so that's all painted in silver that's LP 72 yes LP 72 mica silver and it's also had an oil wash again that'll be covered in another video another series it's had an oil wash to um, to highlight the details just to make it look a bit more interesting and we've got here is this little tube that's going to go underneath so we'll leave that out leave that there for now we've got our instrument panel here again we've got an oil wash on this one I'm just going to remove it from that face okay and I'm also going to have to pick up some black paint with that um that there that little round thing by my finger that's a compass so that should be black so we've got the instrument panel we've got a decal to go on there now I've just put an oil wash on there so I'm going to make sure I don't have any oil on there so I'm going to grab a brand new cotton bud nice clean one get some IPA on there close the bottle okay and then I'm going to wipe that away and make sure that's nice and clean ready for the decal to go on it's got the silver paint on there I wouldn't recommend putting decals directly onto plastic they often don't stick that well it's better much better to put them onto a painted surface so we've got a decal sheet here so here we are I'm just going to pick something up off the floor so here we are you know third video and we're on decals already and this is normal with the um with them um, with the interiors and stuff because you normally get decals for interiors now when you're fitting decals uh you need some water a lot of people say use warm water i don't really worry about it very much to be honest and when you do cut your decals out don't ever be tempted to come along with a knife and cut them out like this okay what happens when you cut with a knife 
you end up like leaving a trench behind so it leaves you a raised edge and it can be difficult to actually slide them off the paper you end up curling the edge over and stuff like that so what you want to do is get yourself just a pair of a little pair of scissors here any old pair of scissors I have got special equipment for decals but I'm not going to use them on this build because it's a beginner's build I'm going to use the same tools as you're going to find lying around the house you're not going to go and buy special little scissors just for decals when you're at the beginner level put our decals out of the way we don't get any water on them so we've got that one cut off okay the other thing is whenever you do take a decal off the sheet let me get my scissors again don't have the number so if i was using this fin flash here i wouldn't cut along there and up there and leave that number on there that number six or number nine sorry because what happens they float off in the water and they tend to ruin your decal they'll get underneath your decal so get rid of them and throw them in the bin don't put don't have them on the paper while you do your decal now they say you should have a bowl of water you should have all this stuff ready and everything i've got a little bottle of water here i'm just going to put some on the bench okay a little drop of water like that and then i'm going to get my tweezers which I've put away and i'm going to place the decal in the water just let it soak up some moisture and then leave it to one side don't just leave your decals in a bowl of water what can happen there leave them too long it will dissolve the glue and it will just fall off okay so um there we go so we can leave that for a few seconds and we what we're doing is just touching the decal to see when it's ready to go because it will slide okay it's it's a it's newer modelers in fact even older modelers even me to a certain extent scared stiff of decals they're, sometimes they can be a complete and utter nightmare they can make or break a kit so just a job more water on there just leave this to soak for a little while leaving the camera on so you can see it in real time so you know what you're looking for and what will happen in a minute i'll do that and it will actually slide on the paper there we go you can see you can see there now it's sliding if i pick it up Get it closer to the camera for you. You can see that I can slide it around on the paper. Okay, so what we can do now is just put a bit of water on there. And then we can use wet your finger. Don't ever do this with a dry finger because quite often your finger will be sticky. And when you lift your finger away, the decal will come off. So we're just going to put that down there, lay the paper over the top. And then just it's so difficult because this part's so tiny. Just get rid of the paper. And now, using literally anything, you can position the decal and get it exactly where you want it. Okay, so that's that. And we can see when we look at the back, it's off to one side a bit. So we're just going to bring it this way a bit. It actually fits very very nicely I we'll have to stop the camera I think Jess is about to start barking okay so that's our decal I'll be looking at it from the back we can see we've got an even amount of decal sticking out all the way around and that's absolutely fine so now we've got that down Going to take this is a fresh end of a cotton bud that I haven't used. Okay, I'm going to just roll that cotton bud along. Don't worry, we'll cover decaling in a lot more detail in another video, maybe on this one. But this is just, yeah, see, I've moved it now. And there we go, that's gone down absolutely beautiful. No set and solutions or anything. I've just literally put that decal down. Now, I can't do anything with that now for at least an hour or so. I need to let it dry. So what I should have done is done it before I started this video. But now I've got to wait before we can continue. So um, I'm going to leave that for an hour or so. And then I'll uh, I'll come back and we'll, we'll have a look at carrying on. I think in the meantime I'll also paint that compass black as well. So I'll see you soon. One other quick thing I'd like to show you guys that I don't think anybody else shows in their beginner videos. Something I personally always like to do is reduce my sprues. Now, if you look here, we've got this sprue here. This is sprue B. And all we've got on here is our radiator underneath. 
We've got suspension, uh, uh, undercarriage supports there, exhaust and undercarriage legs. We've got our spinner there. So, <clears throat> I mean, we could reduce this one, but there's not really a lot of point because we're going to leave that piece on there there. Or we could cut all the parts off and put them in a bowl because we know what they all are. Here. Right, now, we know we're not going to use that because we've already got this one here, which is all painted up and ready to go. So we're not, we could get rid of that. So that one's going. We know that we're not going to use the three braided propeller or the spinner. So that can go, that can go, and that can go. Now quite often in kits like Tammy and stuff, you'll get a line of, a line of instructions and it'll tell you parts not used and you can go out and get rid of them. It's a good idea, if, if you do have a kit with that, it's a good idea to get rid of them before you start because then you won't make the mistake. Like say this rudder is slightly different from that rudder. I can't personally see a difference in it, but say it is, you can't mistakenly use the wrong one. So if you look in the instructions, you can see it's telling us to use rudder D4. So this is sprue E. So this is the one we're going to use, D4. Okay, so we're going to keep that one. We've also got the tail wheel. Now that tail wheel there, look, has got a longer shaft than that one. So which tail wheel are we going to use? It's telling us to use D3, so we're using that one. So we're not going to use this one here. We're not going to use that tail wheel, so we'll get rid of that one. Then we can't risk mistakenly using the wrong one. And we're not going to be using this rudder, which is on the east roof, so we can get rid of that one. When it comes to doing this rear panel here, we're using part D7, which is there. So we're not using this one. So we can get rid of that. So now, as you can see, we can take this and remove that. Okay, so now we've all got left is that little piece there. This one here, not really a lot of point in removing it because we're going to still end up with you know this piece here and this piece here. So we may as well leave that one. Now this one here, as you can see, we've got nothing in here at all. We've got nothing over here. We've got this part there. So what we can do is cut that one there, cut that one there. It's that bit gone. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of those two bits. You see, and now what we've got is a tiny sprue instead of one. Instead of something this size, we've now got a sprue this size. Same here, we can cut this off here, cut this off here. Yes, we're losing the letter, but you can always write the letter on there somewhere else should you want to, or you might have by now memorized which sprue it is. So we'll get rid of these bits here, just like so. And now you have a much smaller pile of sprues than you had to start with. Okay, so you've got less, you're not going to use the wrong parts by mistake because you've got rid of them. And we've managed to save all this space. And quite often you will find, I mean this is different because this, this is an end opening box, but quite often you'll find with a top opening box, once you've built the main part of the aircraft, you can actually then get rid of the box as well. You can put the box in the recycling. Don't forget to take your... Uh, your points off the side, your um, flying hours there. Don't forget to take them off. Um, and, uh, and there we go. So you can see that we've, we've, you know, we've reduced our pile of sprues down to a much smaller, down to a much smaller pile. And in some cases, especially with the newer Airfix kits, they've, with the more complex kits, they've very, they've designed them very carefully and very cleverly. So you've got particularly the 124 scale Hellcat, which you're not going to go anywhere near if you're a beginner. Um, that kit, they've got all the cockpit on one sprue, all the engine on one sprue, all the wings on one sprue, all the other wing on another sprue. So you can actually go through and just get rid of sprues. And it's nice to get rid of it, make more space on the bench. So um, that's just a little tip, really, while, the, the, while this, this decal here on the instrument panel is drying out. So... Uh, We'll give that another few minutes and then we'll come back and get on with the build. Right, so pushing on, you can see here that in the instructions they're asking us to drill a hole in the side of the fuselage here and it says 0.7 millimeters. Now quite often the manufacturer doesn't tell you the size of the hole. So the best thing to do 
if you've got some of these digital calipers or some means of measuring small bits and pieces, go and measure the size of the pin that's going in the hole and draw the hole. Or draw the hole the smallest size you can, even just even just make a pin prick. Just get a so that's like a, a needle or something sharp and just put it in the hole and just push it through. Okay, and then you can see on the outside where that hole has got to be. Okay, so I can push that through. You can see I've made a hole in the plastic. And then if I just come along with a sharp knife, I could remove the excess plastic and end up with a hole. Okay, so you can just do that. And then you can use the end of a sharp pointed knife to open it up to the size you need. In this case, they're telling us to use a 0.7 drill. Now, if you've got yourself some drills, fair play, well done. If you are going to buy yourself some drills, don't be tempted to go on Amazon and buy these things. Okay, these things are for circuit boards and they're great in a, in a tool, in a fast revving tool, but they're no good if you're using them as a, a twist drill in your hand. I'll show you for why. So it's three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 0.7. If I put this in here, what will happen as soon as I start to turn it, you can see it's cutting, it's rather than cutting a hole, it's screwing itself in. Okay, and what sometimes happens when you get to the bottom, when you get so that the plastic is up against this angle here, it can go no further, so you twist it and the drill just snaps off. So they're okay for using in tools, but they're absolutely rubbish for using by hand. These are the ones you want to get, Microbox, and always look for Microbox in capital letters. If you get if you're in the UK, in the UK, in the UK, get them for premium hobbies, and you'll always get the good ones. If you see these on eBay or whatever for like two pound fifty, they're ripoffs. They're not the real ones. They're normally about ten pounds. You can get all sorts of different ones. I've got these here, which you can see have got like a gold coating on them. There's no writing. We're in a dark blue box. They're absolute rubbish so make sure you get the proper ones microbox should always be written in black and all in capital letters so i'm going to come along here i'm going to get the 0.7 out and i'm going to put it in my little pin vise now this is a david union 150 pin vise and i think this is the best pin vise on the planet absolutely brilliant little thing the beauty of it is it will hold right down to like 0.3 okay and it will go all the way up to five millimeters Whereas usually you'll find with these things, you get this type of thing here and you've got all these interchangeable collars and you've got to keep changing it. So there we go. So I wasn't expecting to have to drill any holes in this model, I must be honest. So I didn't include this in my initial tools, but um, just put that in there and then we can come along, put the drill in. And as you can see, I can actually drill that rather than have it have the drill screwing itself into the plastic. And that's the that's the beauty of it. And it's all to do with the um, the pitch of the uh, of the helix. So I'm just going to shave that gently, and then use my sanding stick and just very very gently remove any raised edge that's on there. So there we've got our 0.7 hole. So as I say, if you don't have drills, if you don't have a pin vise, get a pin. Okay, stick the pin into the back of the hole that like you just saw me do, and then you could open it up with a knife, or you could just keep pushing the pin through until it's about the right size. In this case, you can see I could have gone through so it was about that deep. So you could do that. But um, if you have got drills or this is a hobby you're going to be, you know you're going to be getting into, you are eventually going to have to get yourself some drills and a pin vise. So if you're going to build that Sea King from Airfix, the new one, you're definitely going to need some drills for that one because there's holes to drill everywhere. Right, so that's our hole in there, and that's nicely done. Now, as you can see, we've got paint in here. We need to get rid of that. So I'm going to, again, use this sharp point and just scrape away the paint. It doesn't need to be completely shiny and perfect grey plastic. You just What you're doing is just removing the paint so that the glue can actually get to work. And also, you'll find with some kits, like wingnut wings, which, if, again, if you're a beginner, you're not going to be doing one of those for a little while. You'll find that some kits the paint will actually interfere with the fit. So we've got our instrument panel. As you can see, I've painted the compass, and that's just going to drop in there into that slot, like so. Okay, and what I'm going to do here, 
I'm going to I'm going to let it fall out on the bench, which wasn't intentional. What I'm going to do here is place this in position, just so they're telling us to do in the instructions. Hold it in and make sure my finger is away from the joint. And I'm just going to put a drop of extra thin cement in there behind it. And that will hopefully just hold it there in position. Now the next thing I'm going to do is get the other half of the fuselage and push, put them together. Because I want to make sure that this is all going to fit together when it's all in. And as you can see... We do have, and it's closed up with some pressure, but we do have a tiny, tiny, tiny little gap there. So it could actually do with having a little bit of plastic removed. So when it's dry, I'll give it a sand. What I'm going to do is get a peg, get a clothes peg, clamp it together, and just let that dry into that one side. Okay, and that way we know we've got it in the correct position. As you can imagine, if it was like this or like this, it wouldn't line up. So we'll get another peg. We'll come here, get another peg and just peg the back together like that. And there we are, that's all done. What we can do if you really want to be fussy is get some of your 10 mil tape, like we used in the first part of the series. and Just put a piece over there. Tape the nose together, another little piece there, put that over there and tape the spine together. And they've got the fuselage all held together nicely and that instrument panel is in there glued to one side and it's going to dry and it's going to set in the right position. So we'll leave that for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just let it gel off and then, we're, uh, then we'll carry on. And we're back. So we've got the... The fuselage here, I'll take the pegs off. This is like two hours later, I'm guessing. So we'll get this off of here. Just like so. Get that tape off of there. And then we can gently pull the fuselage halves apart. And as you can see, we've got the paint taken out of that one. And we've got the instrument panel there, nice and solid. And what we can do is take our sanding stick and with the smooth side, just very gently, just rub, rub away, just take a tiny bit of plastic off, just to try and improve that fit and make the fuselage close up a bit easier. And there we go, as you can see, it's closing up. Lovely. So there we go. I'm just going to take a tad more off. There we go. And that will get the fuselage going together lovely. Right, so we've got that instrument panel in. And if you look at the instructions, what it's telling us to do is fit all this area onto the wing okay so we're going to do that now i've removed i can use my round bladed knife remove some paint from there just to uh, improve the adhesion and then on the bottom of here we've got two pins that go into those two holes so we'll grab our tamiya extra thin and we'll put a drop there and we'll put a drop in there just like so and then we can drop this in and that should be enough to hold it in place and this guys is one of the reasons I always say I really think Airfix should consider 148 scale kits for starter sets because This is all quite small, all quite fiddly, and for a new modeler, maybe a little bit off-putting, but it is doable. You can see there we've got that, we've got the rudder pedals, the control column and everything now glued into the wing, and that's all good. 
and then go back to the instructions and it's telling us to put the seat onto this bulkhead here and it's telling us to put the bulkhead in and also that's going to glue to the back or the bottom of that instrument panel piece there so I've had a look at this and it's quite again it's quite awkward it's a bit fiddly so if you are new try and bear with me and see what I'm doing here so on the back of the seat here you have two tiny little cutouts and two lugs and I have a feeling that those two lugs are going to sit above you've got on here on this bulkhead you've got four posts okay one two three and four and I think those two lugs in the back of the seat sit above the top two and then the bottom two will fall in now this is exactly what I'm saying about these starter sets you know you've got a tube of glue and the end of the nozzle is about three millimeters in diameter how on earth are you supposed to glue this together so as you can see there's no positive location for any of this there could have easily been holes whatever to pick up on but it's extremely difficult so what I'm going to do I am going to get extra thin and I'm going to put it all down there and all down there and then try and get it just to stick into place because it is so so vague it's untrue and if you were watching Moss's live stream to me it was last night to you it'll be a few days ago today is Tuesday the 29th of August 2023 um, and we there was a video or a live stream last night that Moss did and the question was have Tamiya you know are Tamiya still king of the hill and we had some shared opinions on it and my opinion is no they're not but you won't find awkward fitting parts like this with no real contact area or anything you know if this was Tamiya that would have a peg or a line down the back for it to go on to it would be positive it wouldn't detract from the detail of the kit at all but it would be a positive location and as this is here we have four absolutely tiny tiny little areas of, of connection and that seat's now gone on there but boy oh boy you know I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to fit um, and the instructions are just seat on so you know it's um I'm not knocking airfix at all it's a great little kit it's beautifully detailed um, and if it wasn't being marked I mean this kit isn't marketed as a starter set but this kit is part of their starter set range I believe and I think this sort of thing would scare the living daylights out of a a new modeler and they'd think I can't do it especially with the uh, with the great big tube of glue you get in the um, in the starter set so there we are now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave this to dry because I'm not a hundred percent convinced this is gonna stay here and the last thing we want is for halfway through the build we don't want the seat to fall off of that bulkhead do we so um, I think I'm gonna just leave it there I just want to check quickly how this bulkhead's going to fit in here we've got a, a pin on the side here and obviously all this area up here that's going to locate so that pin is going to go into there to that hole in the fuselage and then this is going to go across like so and we've got a it actually fits beautifully to be honest we have a where this tubular structure here comes down it fits into there and it fits beautifully it does fit very very nicely indeed 
obviously it's falling out because it's not glued in but I am going to leave this because I am not convinced that seat is going to stay in place so I want, to, I want that to dry before I start messing around with it because I do not want that seat falling off halfway through the build because you can imagine with those four tiny tiny little contact areas trying to get that seat to go in afterwards would be a nightmare I don't know why what Airfix didn't do is put like a great big tab on the bottom here that went into a slot in the back of the seat and then you have a solid positive location and when you look at it from above from the cockpit you would not see it it wouldn't be any problem at all and it's not only Airfix to do this if you look at the Ravel 130 second scale Spit Spitfire Mark II um, that's the same the actual cockpit construction is just you know it's just it's just not thought out at all by by a modeler so um there we go I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll be back okay so this seat is uh, dry enough now for handling and it is staying in place but um you know if, if you are doing this with tube glue uh, I would thoroughly recommend you get some good old dollops in the back there if you've got any super glue perhaps put some little drops of super glue in the back there in those little tiny contact areas just to sort of give it a bit of support because um, as I say the last thing you want is that falling out so it's time to add this into the fuselage half and we're going to do the same as we did before we're going to put this in and then clamp the fuselage halves together and let it dry so I'm going to put a drop of cement in there and only in there I'm not going to put any up the top and then I can fit that pin into that hole just like so and it should stay there and then if I put my finger on the top and then pivot it over where the glue is now that little the bottom of that V is designed to go into that little bulkhead and it fits beautifully in fact I'm going to put a drop of cement on each of those end pieces as well because they all appear to be touching oh dear I just caught it with my finger and ripped it off so and this is what I'm saying, if you're watching this, Dale at Airfix, you know, this is what I'm saying. How can you expect, you know, a, a 10 or 12 year old kid that's, that's never built a model to pick this up and build it? It's, it's not, it's not user friendly for a beginner. It really isn't. So there we go. I'm going to put some more cement on there because we flicked it away, didn't we? So that's gone in there. And then what I'm going to do is once again put this fuselage half on and just check that everything's going to line up. And this is really good practice, guys, because there's nothing worse, especially if you do it like a bomber with loads of different compartments and lots of bulkheads, there's nothing worse than building the model or getting all the interior in and then you come to put your, your fuselage halves together and you find that you can't actually physically get it together and you don't know what's causing the problem. Now I did the, the instrument panel, glued that in, fitted it, realized that had a bit of a gap, sanded some off, problem solved. Now I'm doing this one. If I get a problem, I know that, I, that it's that's that's causing the problem. So again, problem solved. So that's what you want to be doing. It's um, it's like a, it's a standard fault finding thing that engineers do, is never change more than one thing at a time, and then you know what the problem is. So if we find that we have an issue now, we know that because we've done the instrument panel, we know that it's this bulkhead that's causing the problem. And in this case, it's very, very simple. It's all very simplified. But at the end of the day, um, as I say, if it was a bomber, if it was a B-17 or something with a load of bulkheads going through, you really want to be go through one by one. And I'm just going to test fit this on top of here to make sure that this is all going to go together. And it does. And as I said to you earlier, we can look down in there and you can see hardly anything. So there we are. Um, but yeah, it all fits together very, very nicely indeed. 
It's going to need a little bit of work on that wing to fuselage joint. You can see we've got a bit of a, a rock there going on. Not rock a roll, a bit of a rock. So we'll deal with that. But um, there we are. So I'm kind of looking at this now and I wonder if we can get on and just glue these fuselage halves together. Because we're kind of there. We're ready to go. Everything is fitted, everything is located, everything's fitting nicely. I think I'll just leave that to dry a little longer before we do that. Just in case I want to take it, move it around or do something, I don't know. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we've been about half an hour and that bulkhead will be in there nice and tight now. So we're going to take this tape away and just get that over there out of the way because we do not want tape. On our model when we start putting liquid cement in because what will happen is the tape will capillary underneath so <clears throat> what we're going to do if we take these fuselage halves apart you can see the cockpit is in there all nicely done all nicely painted seats nice and solid and everything's good to go okay so that's all good right so now we can put our fuselage halves together you're probably wondering why did I just take them apart because you just had them together. I'm doing it for you guys so that the beginners can see what's going on. Okay, so you can see that at the tail end here, we've got the half of the fuselage has got the, the fin and the other half doesn't. And it's beautifully done by Airfix because basically the fin on a hurricane is off to one side. So I'm going to get my Tammy Extra Thin, we're going to get that part out of the way, so we don't drip any glue on it, we're going to get our wings out of the way, we'll get our pegs out of the way. And what I'm going to do here is start at the back end, and I'm going to put some Extra Thin into there, and that will capillary into the joint. Okay. Now, if you notice, I generally hold the parts together before I put the glue in, and the reason I do that, if you don't, if, you, if I put glue in there now, in this joint here, and then squeezed it, I'd get glue oozing out, which doesn't really matter because it's all going to be sanded and smoothed and everything anyway. But the problem is, if you've got lots of glue oozing out, you end up with a large soft area and it will probably shrink back in a couple of days. So if you glue in the fuselage halves together and you can afford to leave it for a couple of days and not touch it, then you're good to go. But what you want to do is try and use the minimum amount of cement. So what I'm going to do here, we've got this gap. See this tiny gap hanging on here? That's going to be our friend. Because I can put cement in there and it will capillary along down that joint. And you can see that when I squeeze it together, I get a little bit of glue oozing out. Not a lot, just a little bit. Do the same up here. That will capillary down there. And there we go and we can squeeze those fuselage halves together and it all goes together beautifully okay just like we did with the wings but this is going together a lot nicer than the wings if you remember I had a problem with my wings the top wing was actually shorter than the bottom wing and it's caused some issues with putting the wings together but here the fuselage halves are on the same sprue so the shrinkage on these would have been the same which is cool. Okay, so what we're doing, we've got the glue in there. We can put some more on the inside because the design of the model allows us to get some cement on the inside so we can get a nice, strong, welded together joint. Get some cement in there. There we go. And that's all good. We're all good to go. Okay, so that's the rear half of the fuselage all glued together. And the glue is no longer wet. It's no longer liquid. So we can take couple of bits, I'll get some new bits instead of using this old stuff. We can take a couple of bits of tape, once the glue is gelled off, stick that on there, pull it over and there we go. I can do the same at the tail end, stick that on there, pull it and over we go. And that is the fuselage there, the rear half of the fuselage glued together. If we want to we can put a peg on the back there but it's all staying together beautifully. On the nose we're going to do the same again. Again we've got a gap. You can even put your finger in there and pull it apart should you want to. 
and that will make the glue capillary a lot better than if there's no gap there. Okay, so that's that then. And when we push this together, you will see. Let's just get some more in the front there. You can see when I squeeze it, we get a wet line of cement all the way down there. And what I'm going to do here is let this just gel off. Okay, keep it together. And then what I'm going to do with what fingernails I've got, I'm just running my fingernail across the top. And what I want to feel <clears throat> is the same either way. So you can hear I've got a step going that way, which means this side is higher than that side. When I go that way, I've got no step, so I need to push it down. What I want to do is try and get them both level. The other thing you can do is take something hard, like here a rule, you can actually roll that over there and it will try and get the parts all level. And what we're trying to do here is have the minimum of sanding. If you imagine looking nose on like this, here are the fuselage halves, we want them like that. We don't want them like that or like that. We want them like that. We want them dead level on the top and then it'll be a couple of swipes with a standing, sanding stick, job done. Seam gone. So I'm happy with that, I think. And we'll get some more cement into there. We want this nice and solid. We don't want it all splitting open on us. So we get plenty of cement in there. And get a good weld action going on. And there we are. Right, so we're just going to check again, checking for the step. What you want is to feel equal when you rub your fingernail across either way, it needs to feel the same both ways. And then once you're happy, Get some tape down one side, pull it across, and that will hold that together. And then we can just check again, do some manipulation, pull it about, squeeze it, pull it, press it, prod it, whatever, and get it all good. And there we go. So that's our fuselage halves glued together. And here I've got a bit of a mismatch there, so I'm just going to squeeze that and get it better here we are so you can hear now run the fingernail there fingernail there and i know my nails are disgusting guys i'm sorry but you can hear there this front is actually slightly twisted if i get it right here it goes out there if i get it right there it goes out there so we just kind of just play them off against one another and get them as good as we can. Just put some more cement down in there. If we get good solid welded gap free joints we may not need any filler whatsoever. It might just be a case of sanding them. And there we are. That's our fuselage together. As tiny as it is. And that's that. So what we could do now is go on and fit this rear section, but they're telling us to wait until the wing goes on. But what I'm going to do, the reason I've got it off the sprue, I'm going to fit it in there because that is going to hold the fuselage at the right positioning. So if when we glue it together, we've got the fuselage too closed up at the bottom here, when we come to fit this piece, we may open it and split that joint open. But as it is now, it's in its natural state how it's going to be when it's all fitted together. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to get another bit of tape and just take that back end in. 
there we go so there we are there's our fuselage we've got the, the belly there dry fitted we've got the top joints all done all looking fine and dandy and the last thing to do now is to come along with our extra thin and just put a drop of glue in the back of there and a drop of glue on the front of there so that we've got the the bulkheads and the instrument panel all glued in nicely okay you can see we've got a little bit of glue oozing out there I'm not going to touch it I'll just let it dry and it will disappear now this here you can see we've got a gap around here I don't think I'm going to worry about that because I've got a feeling when the actual glazing goes on it's going to hide it if we do happen to see any line there we can do a local repair and sort that out and then just brush paint some green in there not 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 to worry it's going to be absolutely fine but I've got a feeling the canopy hides it so there we are right so what have we done in this part we've got our cockpit built up We've got our fuselage house glued together. I'm going to go away now and leave this. This needs to be left for at least 12 hours, preferably 24 hours before we start sanding. Um, and this is one of the biggest things about modeling when you are a beginner. You need patience. It's no good trying to just throw this together in a day and end up with a perfect model. If you want to throw it together in a day and end up with a, a model that looks all right, that's absolutely fine. But if you want a seam free, beautifully built little masterpiece to put on your display bench at a show or whatever, you need to be taking your time. If I sand all this out now, if I left all this for an hour and sanded all the joints out, it would be great. But within a day or two, the seams would come back because this is a solvent cement. It actually, it's not gluing the plastic together, it's welding it. So the actual the actual plastic in this joint area has become this all the way down it's like a weld it's all like soft and molten and as it dries it will shrink so you need to leave it for 24 hours let it shrink and then when you sand it it will stay as it is which is why we use the super glue for the filling and if we do have to do any filling I will use super glue on this and note again sprue nib on there sprue nib on there sprue nib on there I don't worry about sprue nibs on joints that I'm going to be sanding anyway there's no point in trying to get them all perfectly sanded before you put the parts together okay so we'll leave that there for part three we've got the fuselage together and we've got a cockpit in and uh oh one other thing when you are doing something like this concentrate on this area here Get this nice because this is where everyone's eye will go. And if they see a seam down here, they'll just strike your model off as not being, you know, top notch. So you want to make that area there seamless. Under here, don't worry about it so much. If you've got a bit of a step there, don't sacrifice having no step there for having a step on top. Okay? So there we go. Happy with that? Thank you for watching, and if you just want to see what it's all going to look like, we can drop that into there, like so. Just drop that into there, like so. And it's all a lovely fit. The wing has got a bit of a rock on it, um, and this rear panel is going to take a bit of fitting, I think. I've got to be careful not to break the joystick off. But uh, there we go. I think I have broken the joystick off actually. Yes, I have. There we go. So that's what you don't want to be doing. So I'll stick that back on. And <laughs> now we'll go for Okay, I was going to end the video there and then move on to part four. But I thought I would actually um, show you this, getting rid of this seam here. This area here is probably the most important on the whole model. This is where everyone will look for seams and stuff. Um, I managed to get the control column glued back on. The reason I broke it off is I put it up here and I was trying to wedge the wing between the front and back here and managed to slide it so obviously it broke the control column off. So if we build the kit properly as per the instructions and fit the wing before we fit the belly pan then uh, we won't have a problem. But so that belly pan's there just literally to give the fuselage something to hold on to otherwise it's all just sort of like a an upside down C. So I'm going to use here a magic marker. I wouldn't suggest using magic marker on your model because basically it'll just keep coming through the paint if you get any left on there. So what I'm going to do is just colour either side 
of that seam line and down the spine as well okay and what this will do it will not only show me where I'm um, sanding actually I didn't do the underneath did I it will not only show me where I'm sanding but it will also show me if I've got any low areas so if I've got an area that's low like in the seam and needs to be filled then it will show it up so I'm gonna use the smooth side of my sanding stick and the first thing I do is get rid of that sprue nib so just go across and you can see straight away what I'm sanding the black is showing us where we're actually sanding so just gently stroke it now very gently stroking the sanding stick across I'm literally just using the weight of the sand stick I'm not really putting any pressure on it at all and we can see straight away that we've got on the right hand side here we have a, a black line um, and then when we get to here it's probably going to be pretty good and we still have a black line to the right hand side that's okay if you notice again I'm not using a sponge I'm not going straight in with a sponge because a sponge will just accentuate what's already there in most instances okay now I've got to be careful here we've got these two humps we've got a hump either side we don't want to remove them so just being careful in this area here just to sand right so now that's done I've also got that little area inside the fuselage to do in there so what inside the cockpit should I say so I'll come along with my little sanding stick and I'm also going to sand that front edge off there so the interior is looking nice we'll have to paint that probably black I'll check my references but I think that's going to be black in there and then we've also got on the back this little cut out here I'm not exactly sure what this cut out is for there we go so that's all lovely now now over here now we've got those sanding marks we need to get rid of I've been using this sanding sponge, which is an Infini 1000 grit. I'm going to bring in another tool from the arsenal. This is a Champneys. It's a nail file. But it's the same thing. You can see it's soft. It's a sponge. So we can use this instead of that sanding sponge. Because all you guys out there that are new, you can get these in your local supermarket or in your boots or whatever. But, uh, it's a bit embarrassing when you're sort of... At the beauty side of things looking for nail files especially when you've got nails like mine you know, if you've seen me with my bald head <laughs> um, it's even more interesting when I buy hairspray but there we go right so the front edge now has a little bit of flash on it so I'm just gonna run the sanding stick over that if you notice one direction don't go giving it this because you'll just round everything off one direction just scrape it off like that and then the same on the underside we're gonna Get rid of that sprue nib first, and then just sand away. And we can see here we've got, in fact, the underside has come out better than the bloody top. You can see we've got a bit of a step there, so that's going to require a bit of filling. We can, you can come along with the sponge and go as mad as you like. You see, this is falling apart. This is the problem with nail files versus the proper you know, the proper files for the job the proper modelers um, sanding sticks so there we are now once again I'm going to take my knife and where that panel line is I'm just going to run the knife across the same here get it in the groove if I can find the groove just press down on that one and then we can use our tool pointy tool just to scratch that line in and it's best to I know you're thinking why are you doing that now and are you going to fill it because I'm going to keep the line there okay so we've got a nice line there now and we have a lovely nice joint there ready for, for preparation so what I'm going to do now is put some super glue on there just in case because I can still we can see a dotted black line so we need to put some super glue on there and then just blend it out with the sander. We also need to blend that there. I'm just going to scrape that off. A bit of flash on the edge of there, look. 
there we go that's that done and then we'll do the same on the spine come along smooth side of the sanding stick get rid of that sprue nib first again we can see where we're sanding what's going on and we're also being careful not to put any flats on here so I'm what I'm basically doing is going like this and then like that and then like this so there we go so you can see there we've got some little low areas there We've still got our, our um, sprue nib. So there we go. You can see we got a little low line there. And we've got a little bit of a seam there that's going to be covered by the canopy, but we deal with it anyway. And so we'll go all the way there with some black super glue and then we'll sand it out just like we did on the edge of the wing. Now you don't need to see that but I did want to show you getting this right here and as you can see if I polish it, I'll just get this polishing stick and polish it so you can see what I've done. It makes it a lot easier to see if I polish it. Okay, so you can see there. Where it's all been sanded it's nice and smooth and everything but we're going to do that seam just in case and that's why i use the black pen it's just it shows it, i would recommend using pencil rather than pen because if i prime that now that black will come through the primer and then it'll come through the paint it'll come through everything um, because the the solvents in the paints will dissolve the ink and it'll just come back through that's why i recommend not using a pen so there we go We've still got a low spot on that sprue nib. <clears throat> Should be able to use this to polish actually, I think. Yeah, that's so the nail file will polish as well. So there we go. So basically what you need for doing this sort of thing is a hard stick and a sponge. You need both. Okay, so I will see you for part four, and I will have this seam all filled and dealt with. Just going to scrape that panel line back in there. Come in from the other side. I've gone off there. I've managed to mess that completely up. So use a sponge just to sand that out, and then we'll fill it in. And rescribe it later. I'm going to have to cover scribing. I can't keep using this pointy tool. Um, so there we go. I will see you all for part four. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.